host of Small Talk with Jill, exploring businesses one virtual interview at a time. Today I'm chatting with Nate Roberts, owner of Serenity Hobbies, Central New York's premier gaming store and event center, your one-stop shop when it comes to games. Welcome to Small Talk, Nate. I'm so excited to have you on this little talk show that I've created with YouTube, showcasing our Otsego County businesses. And let me tell you, I've heard so much about you and your business. We know that what you offer the community here in Oneonta is something that can reach further than Oneonta, Cooperstown, Otsego. So we want to tell people out in the world about you. And my question, first of all, is I'm guessing you were a gamer before you started the business but you know taking on a business is a is some is a big undertaking so how did you start well first thanks for having me Jill it's a pleasure to uh, to break up the the day in day out of uh, quarantine living well I've, I've pretty much you know been a gamer all my life one day uh, you decide that you you can't work for anybody else and uh, you know you got to start your own thing I was a magic player for a really long time you know traveled around played in a lot of major events I eventually became a board gamer and a tabletop uh, war gamer I kind of did it all I just wanted to create a scene where you know, we could play competitively and, and regionally too. Uh, get people not just from this area, from all the surrounding uh, cities and, and counties to come in and do bigger events. So now that from just that little snippet that you just said to me is you have expanded and touched on so many different um, pieces of gaming, maybe pun intended, I don't know, you know. Um, are you ever asked to try out new games? Do you ever... You know, I know there's a lot of developers out there and, and it sounds like you would be the person they'd be like, ooh, we want to talk to Nate. Yes, actually, we, we do a lot of, uh, of demo gaming here as well as um, some of the local developers will play test uh, games here. We've had uh, Dan come down from, uh, from DHP. We've had Chris from Broken Archer um, out of Binghamton come in. And, uh, you know, we host a, a game night where they're going to feature their, their new game and everybody signs waivers and we play tests and we get feedback and it's, a, and it's a great time. So now with this quarantine, obviously you can't have people inside, so you, you have to do that curbside. How's, how, how is that working out? Uh, so the curbside and the delivery is actually pretty okay. Um, actually, we just closed out April and the numbers were not terrible. And as far as uh, continuing to game, we, you know, we used to host about four or five uh, magic events a week. We've cut that down to two and we're doing them both online using uh, MTG Arena and they're fairly successful. Um, we're doing Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, using an online platform on Sundays. We've stopped doing Pokemon for now just because it was it's a younger audience, so it's harder to to incorporate the technology. We have at least three Dungeon Masters out there with our Roll20 account running virtual Dungeons & Dragons uh, every week. We've been playing virtual board games using Tabletopia on um, Steam. You know, what I think is important uh, through this time is to keep the community together as much as you can without being able to physically meet each other. The Magic players, the Yu-Gi-Oh players, the board gamers, sad for the war gamers, because that's really hard to virtualize. But everybody else, uh, you know, is keeping in touch. It's really fun to be in a uh, Skype or a Zoom or even like, a, even just a voice, like a Discord chat with these people that you're already accustomed to meeting on a weekly basis, you know, and just meeting them online. And, and it's just, uh, you know, it's like, it's like we were not in our homes, you know? So do you think as you're, you know, I, I'm a small business owner as well, and we're, you know, all trying to figure out how this is going to unravel. How are we going to reopen? Do you think some of these new um, systems or ways of doing business that you implemented that you may consider to continue, you know, once we do reopen? The amount of free time that I have. <laughs> yeah, uh, free now. Time. Entrepreneur yeah. free time. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Now that we're in quarantine, uh, you know, as soon as we were closed by uh, New York State, I inventoried, you know, did like one final inventory, took everything out of the back room, did literally everything, uh, dumped a bunch of old stuff online and have been putting all my current stock on, uh, in, a, in a web store. And it's, it's going slowly but surely. All the items are there, but it's the adding pictures is the hard part. I'm um, probably like 20 to 30% of the way through. And this is a project that I could never have completed without this amount of time. 
I literally covered every inch of table space and nearly every inch of floor space with product when I emptied out the back room. In the day-to-day -day of business, there's not a lot of time to access that, that inventory. Um, and I never could have I could have been open and done this project. So, you know, a little, a little blessing in disguise there for, for finally getting me online in like a web store sense, um, which, I, which I'm actually grateful for. Um, so hopefully that, you know, will continue um, once we open again. I, I would like to stay on top of that and keep that a part of the, the Serenity uh, gauntlet, so to speak. As far as like the virtual platforms, you know, I, I would like to see everyone just come back to the store and, 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 just, and just play, you know, play on a tabletop, you know, meet each other face to face. There's something about the, the social and tactile um, of a tabletop game that, that really is, is special and keep, sets it apart from, from video gaming. With your type of business, obviously the locals are important to it, but also the college students, I imagine were key um, influencers in the business. How much does, um, not, not literally how much, but um, when tourists, when the baseball camps come into town, you know, there's, there's game after game after game and they bring their families and you know, there's only so many games that they play in and they're here for a long period of time and they're looking for things to do. Do you find them um, coming into the shop? Uh, I do an incredible uh, amount of business with the summer tourists. Um, the baseball parks being canceled this summer is going to be, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how bad it is when we get there. Um, I would say it's, it's besides Christmas, it's probably my best season is, is summer. And the, and the college students do well. I, I feel like the college students are good for, you know, the, the, they're similar to the tourists in that it's, uh, it's, they're on Main Street anyway, and they're walking around and they're eating and shopping and they stop in, they buy, you know, a couple of things. Um, it's really the locals that, uh, that keep it going, the regulars that are the, you know, the lifeblood. And that, that's the unique thing. We are a city, but we have that small town charm, but uh, the economy comes from, is funneled in from several, several different directions. And, I, and uh, yeah, the tourist season this, this year is going to um, play an impact on, on me as well. So those online stores, I'm glad that, you know, it's the irony to it, though, that you did create your online shop. It really, um, I had one. But like you, you know, you're, you're, you love that interaction of that person coming in, but this really made me do my due diligence. And I still have more to do. And I'm looking at it, I've got to create um, a more organized fashion and a realistic way of placing items online. So, right. you know, I think it's something a lot of us uh, smaller businesses need to discuss because, you know, we're, a lot of us are just, uh, individuals and some have a couple employees and it's it's just a way of moving forward yeah um, i have a funny story to tell you <laughs> so you can't tell right now but i love her dearly and monica a local hairdresser oh uh, she's great she, you know her so she had you had a location near her um her shop and my nephew had a new cd out and she wanted to hear it so I had it uh, downloaded on my phone and we were trying to hook it up to her uh, wireless speaker and we're turning up the volume, we're pressing all these buttons and all that. We finally realized that we were playing it over at your shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a little small town charm for you. <laughs> so can we talk about um, what can be purchased? Can I walk in and buy a, a chess set? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we have all sorts of chess sets. Um, we have we have all the classics. You know, you can get checkers, Chinese checkers, backgammon, Scrabble, uh, Yahtzee, Connect Four, Monopoly, Clue, and w there's a ton of variants. And we we carry a lot of them. Um, we actually also just expanded into your standard model kits of uh, planes, cars, trucks. Um, one niche that I feel like only Walmart was answering until until I uh, until I expanded into it. Uh, we also have a, a large selection of Gundam kits, which which is another kind of advanced niche. But <laughs> um, once again, like the only people around um, are doing it. That's wonderful. So now, as a, a lifelong gamer, I one I'm wondering, 
is there one game that you always will cherish and go back to, or are you just, I, you keep spiraling and going to the next, 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 next? Well, uh, so I would say that that's true for board games. I, I am constantly devouring the latest board game. Um, there, there are a couple of classics that I like to go back to. Uh, as far as the one game I will always return to, it's probably Magic the Gathering. It's a collectible card game that I started with when I was probably 12 years old. And, uh, and uh, you know, I've quit it a few times over the years, but I've always gone back. And, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a big part of Serenity now, um, you know, the buying and selling of Magic card singles, as well as the Magic tournaments that we host. Um, so I, I would say magic. So you said a couple, a couple board games. What are those couple? Oh, the couple board games, definitely Lords of Waterdeep. Um, the, you know, the worker placement resource management game that, uh, that we, well, we can always play. It's, it's one that's easy to teach to for new players. It also goes up to six players, which those, uh, those Euro style games are, are hard to find in, in over four. And we tend to have a, a larger group. Um, and sometimes we don't want to split into two groups or, you know, or more. And so we try to just fit everybody into one game. So Lords of Waterdeep is one, uh, and Seven Wonders is probably the other. It's a card drafting civilization builder um, that if you have ever played Magic is, is a nice segue into board gaming because it uses the uh, standard drafting mechanic that you're already used to. Uh, really, really excellent game. Also, 30 to 45 minutes, anyone can play and learn it in, in 10 minutes. So Nate, do you, do you have any special events going on during this quarantine? Obviously people can't come in, in-house, uh, but are you doing anything out of the ordinary? Uh, yeah, we just uh, teamed up with Leaf and uh, CoinOp Legends to host a 1.5K uh, for Super Smash Brothers uh, Ultimate, the Switch game. Um, so Tuesday, May 12th, um, there's going to be two flights, a junior's flight for 13 and under and a senior's flight for 14 and over. Um, you'll play, you'll register online, you'll play online. Um, there'll be a $500 cash uh, prize payout for juniors and a $1,000 cash payout for seniors and uh, totally free to enter. Um, all the information is on the website. You can find the, the Facebook event uh, at uh, the Serenity Hobbies Facebook um, or you can find any information at Coin Up Legends or uh, or Leaf. I'm sure we're I'm sure we're all promoting it. <laughs> uh, start, starting today, actually, I, I I posted about it. Uh, we've also just recently donated um, I'd say between like five and six thousand uh, back issue comic books to the Oneana Teen Center. Um, I I called Ian up and asked him if he'd be interested and. And uh, he's pretty excited. Probably going to do some some grab bags over there, some care packages. So, oh my gosh, We're... that brought tears to my eyes. That is seriously, that's amazing. You know, in these difficult times for for all, and and you're still finding the time to to give forward, pay forward to somebody. That's you're pretty incredible. I heard a lot of good things about you. We've met we've met only met briefly. To those watching, we've met briefly. <laughs> And just one of those passing times in the small, charming community. But he's got big things going on. Whoever's watching this, if you don't live close by, check out his website. Connect with him. You can tell he's got big things going on. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, thank you again for taking the time out of your day to showcase what you have to offer. And I'm excited that we can bring in more people from... Uh, outside of uh, New York State, not just Oneana, Otsego, but outside of New York. Let's bring business to you. Thanks, Jill, so much for having me. And, and yes, let's, uh, let's do it. Take a moment here to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any other updates from Small Talk with Jill. If you know a business or own a business you'd like to see featured, please comment below. If you are new, consider subscribing to this channel and sharing it with other people who would enjoy its content. Until next time, remember, here on Small Talk, we are connecting people to people and business to business.